How to speed up or slow down your video clip in CapCut. Here we go. I've got an eight second clip here of some guys playing basketball. It's already in slow motion, which is okay, but I wanna do something a little different with it. Instead of just this whole eight seconds of being in slow motion, I want it to be at kind of normal speed. And then right here, when this guy rejects that shot, I wanna kind of slow that down just for a blip and then speed it back up. There's a few ways to go about this and all of them start with selecting the clip on the timeline. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then on the right panel, we wanna click on speed. And immediately, as soon as we clicked on this speed tab over here in the properties panel, notice we got these little handles in the upper right. So if we have our mouse looking like this, where we have the vertical line and the two arrows, that would be shortening or extending the clip, cutting out part of what's there but these other little guys that are on the inside that just give us the left and right arrows, if we adjust those, we can pull in and notice in the center of that clip, it's increasing the speed. So now it's at 2.09 X. And if we dragged it the other way, we could slow-mo it out. Now we've got it at 0.37 X. Now that's gonna apply the speed to the entire clip. And that's not what I wanna do. Now, another way I could do this is I could leave it at the speed that it's at, come up here right to about where I wanna slow it down, right about there. I could split this clip at that spot. I'm using the keyboard shortcut S on my keyboard. I believe the default for that though is B on your keyboard. I think I changed mine to S. And let's say I want it to be slow, 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 get the rejection. And then as they come down, I'll go ahead and do another split S on the keyboard, or you can come up to these tools right above the timeline on the left and just click the split button. Now I can take this clip that I wanted to be slow and I can just drag that out and maybe we'll take that out to like around 0.5, make it about half speed. I could take the one before it, we'll move that up and we'll take it to about 2X and take the one after it, just grab the little handle up there and bring it in to about 2x. And now I'm looking at a normal speed. Uh, we hit the slow-mo, the rejection, and then it returns back to normal speed until the end. Simple enough, right? And what I might wanna do is on this section where I slowed it down, things get a little fuzzy there. And that's because video works in frames per second. So assuming we have a clip here that's 30 frames for every second, and let's just say that was a one second clip that we stretched out to be a two second clip. Well, now what we've done is we've taken 30 pictures that are running in sequence, so 30 per second, and now we're using that same 30 pictures over two seconds. So now it's down to 15 frames per second, so that leaves a lot of choppiness. It's like old surveillance video. But super slow-mo can help us out with that. So with that clip, the one we had slowed down with it selected, I'll click super slow-mo, and you have two choices. You have frame blending, and I think you can already sort of see what's happening there. Ooh, I feel like I have my beer goggles on or you can switch to optical flow, which takes a little bit longer to process, but it gives you better quality. So that's what we're gonna go for. That's gonna basically increase the frame rate. Smooth slow-mo is now applied. So let's go ahead and play through that thing. We're going to put normal speed, slow-mo, uh, much smoother at that point, and then back to normal. That's one way you can do it, splitting the clip up into parts and changing the speed. But another way you can do it, make sure you have the clip selected on your timeline, come up and click speed in the properties panel. And then instead of standard, click on curve. And curve gives us a whole bunch of presets that we can work with. Hero and bullet are great for general action shots. Like somebody's making the game winning basketball shot or doing the skateboard trick or kicking the field goal. Hero's really good at that. Let's click on it. And you got a couple of new things going on now. For starters, right below there, you have this weird looking graph. And then down in your timeline, notice all these extra handles that have been applied. When we just changed the speed, we got an extra little handle at the end and an extra little handle at the beginning to adjust our speed with. Since we've applied this hero preset, now we have a whole bunch of different handles and a whole lot of things going on in between them. This dash line is normal speed. Everything above it is faster and everything below it is slower. So it's gonna start out at normal speed. It's gonna ramp up to fast and then drop to really slow for this little bit of time. And then it's gonna shoot right back to a higher speed and then curve back off to the normal speed. Ramp up, drop down to slow, ramp up, drop down to normal. So this isn't really lining up to where we want it to be. We need the slow-mo to start a little bit later, 
and run a little bit later. It's coming in too fast. Now you can adjust these down on the timeline by grabbing these little timing handles and moving things around, but it gets a little weird. So we put our playhead here and say, well, that's where I want slow-mo to start. Once you start fooling with these things and you grab the speed handles and start pulling them in, the whole thing starts to shift in different ways and it gets really confusing really fast. You can see by my graph here that it's just not working out. The easier way to do this is gonna be grab the playhead, find out where you want something to happen. Like I think we said right about here is where we wanted that slowdown to happen. Now let's look up here on the right. In this little graph that we got going on, what we're finding out is at the point where we need to slow down to start is where the slowdown is ending. So let's just grab this and move it over to the right. We can adjust our playhead right in this little box here. So we can come back over and see again that right about here, roughly that area is where we want it to start. So now we can drag this one in. And as we're dragging our speed changer, it's also dragging the playhead with us. So we know right where to drop it. Now, if we grab this vertical line, click on it and drag it backward and forward, that's moving our playhead and that's showing us exactly where we are in relation to these speed changes. And I think this is gonna be a little bit close to where we start the slow-mo. That's gonna get in my way when I try and edit it. I need to drag this one out a little bit more first. So there we go. We'll just get that moved out of our way and then come back in and right about, yeah, we're gonna say right about here is where we wanted to switch from fast mode to slow mode. So I'm gonna click this little half circle right here that is the speed indicator. I'm gonna drag it in. That's gonna put me right about there. Now let's use this line, this vertical line here in this box to see what we're doing. So we've got our normal high speed. This is where it starts to curve down. There's our slow. And actually where our speed up is landing, where the end of the slow mode is landing is actually pretty good. I'm happy with that. I thought I had just moved it out to the right out of the way, but I actually like where it landed. Now, after our slow mo, we've got a much sharper curve than we do going into slow mo. So if we want to fix that, we just come over here and click on this little half circle. We're going to drag this one in closer to about there. And now it'll behave a lot more like it was before, just moving the slow mo to a little bit later play through that normal ramp up oh and then back to normal we can clean that up just like we did when we did the splits and uh, applied the timing specific to sections we'll just click smooth slow-mo and we get the same options either frame blending or optical flow we'll do frame blending this time it's faster and you'll be able to see what it looks like play through we've got yep 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 I'm not a huge fan of the frame blending. I definitely think the optical flow does a better job. A little too much blur on the frame blending. And we're not limited here. Just because we picked the hero preset and we started making some adjustments, we can do more than just moving the slow-mo point. We can also increase the speed before or after if we wanted to. And we could also grab this half circle on the left and just pull it straight down. And that gives us a weird little bump there. I just play that little part. This peak here is happening so fast you can barely even see it. We'll bring those back together where they were. You can also reset if you want to take this back to what you started from, hit the reset button. And you can also add points. You're not just stuck with the curves that the preset put in there. If you want to do something different back here at the beginning, just put your vertical line wherever you want the thing to change, hit the plus, and now you've got another speed change there. Now you've got a bunch of other presets in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click none to take it back to what we started with. We've got the montage, this one, gonna start out a little slower than normal. It's gonna ramp up to a high speed, dip down pretty quick into slow-mo, ramp back up and finish off at normal speed. Sometimes you use one of these presets and it just lands perfectly on what you want it to do. That really is just a happy accident. And it happens most often when the thing that you're trying to really focus on just happens to be dead center in the clip that you're using. This is what the bullet looks like, fast, slow, and then back to fast. Very similar to the hero, except for the hero starts off at normal speed, ramps up to fast and drops down, and then does the same in reverse where the bullet just starts off fast, drops, and then resumes back to fast. You got the jump cut. Things are a little bit slower, and we have a quick speed up only for a split second. Flash in makes the beginning of the clip a little bit faster and then takes 
exit to normal speed for the second part of the clip. And flash out, as you might have guessed, does the exact opposite, your normal speed, uh, until close to midway through, and then it speeds it up on the way out. If you don't want to fool with any of those presets, but you know exactly what you want, you can come in here and click on this custom option. And this gives you the cool little chart down here that just sort of preloads in a bunch of little speed change nodes, and you can move them around wherever you want, however you want. So we come here, we said this was the point we want to make a change. Well, then we're just going to grab this little node, this little half circle. We're going to drop it down. We can make it as slow as we want. And then we're going to take the vertical line, which is our playhead over to that point and say, well, that's where we want to stop the slow-mo. So we'll drag this line over right about there. We said we're going to leave it perfect. And now the way I've got this is it's normal speed, just drops to slow-mo and then goes back to normal speed. Of course, you can adjust the rest of it, move these things around, just grab these little nodes and put them wherever you you want. We can make a completely different speed pattern like that. And that's how you speed up or slow down your video clips in CapCut. I hope this helped you out. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I hope you come back and see me in another video.